Is the Necrofex Colossus any good? This is the end of the regular Vampire Coast unit roster, not the roster itself. As I publish this video, I haven't done Vampire Captains or the Lords or most Regiments of Renown, but it's still a significant milestone, as this is a single entity, giant, hybrid, gunpowder monster. In other words, it's just about the best thing ever. Are you with me? Please, like, subscribe, comment, and consider joining to my Ko-Fi Hidden Cove despite that cheap pirate gag. I stole it fair and square from a video game review. The original was worse, I assure you. This single entity costs 1800 to recruit for 450 upkeep default, but you're usually getting it from a shipbuilding lord regardless, meaning that upkeep is reduced long before you can even recruit one. Health is 9507 on Ultra, which is a good deal less than the pure melee giants. Armor is 75, which isn't bad but far from top tier, and leadership is a middling 50. Speed is 45, and 45 is very decent, leaving it able to keep up with rotting Prometheans and so on. Melee attack is 42 default with an attack interval of 4. Splash size is very large, and a maximum of 10 targets can be damaged, meaning that this is both disruptive and destructive but melee defense of 30 underlines that this is not its specialty. Weapon strength is 412 default, for 103 base damage and 309 armor piercing, a fair bit less than a straight up chaos jump, but again, this is a hybrid, and it's not bad. Charge bonus is a conservative 20, and mass is a Galleon League 5500. For ranged, ammunition is 22 default, same as a mortar or a great cannon. Range is 330, and a word of caution, the firing angle is pretty flat, and the Necrofex always stands straight up, so you can't angle shots along an incline. This matters a lot if you're fighting uphill at a high off gate or something like that. Their shots can damage walls and gates, but hills are invincible. Missile damage is listed as 567, with each projectile doing 33 base damage and 137 armor piercing. 137 is enough to one-shot a Chaos Warrior. This is relevant because each ranged attack fires four projectiles. Reload time is 12, which is far, far faster than a cannon, but total accuracy is a healthy 30. Calibration distance is 225, still well beyond normal handgun range, and calibration area is 10, so the quad shot is not pinpoint accurate. Of course, this is a siege attacker, inflicts fear and terror, and has the undead trait. It summons a deckhand mob when it collapses, but of course that's not much consolation. Extra powder applies as long as ammo is 80% or higher. Moreover, what's really interesting is that this is a far whilst moving unit, meaning that as long as it's facing forward enough, it can rake while flanking, a capability that's simply insane considering the mobility limitations of the faction overall. In the Lord Redline skills, Rotten Death adds a maximum of plus 6 melee defense and plus 6 physical resistance. A rank 7 Necrofex is improved by Hardened by Death, offering plus 8 melee attack, plus 12% weapon strength, and 15% spell resistance, greatly shoring up the weaker aspects of this unit. Of the unit. In the tech tree, Forged Steel Shot reduces equipment cost by 10% and increases armor piercing missile damage by 10%, which is strong because that's a per projectile and you fire 4 at once. Enduring Reanimation reduces upkeep by an additional 10% and reduces recruitment duration by 1, which, for local recruitment such as shipbuilding, allows you to spam recruit Necrofexes in one turn. Finally, I want to draw your attention to Reinforced Carcasses, which grants plus 20% physical resistance to the Necrofex Colossus, adding up to a maximum of 26%. Granted, Magical Attack will ignore this, but it makes for a much more survivable single entity in a blob situation. Now, how do you use the Necrofex Glosses? Here's the thing. Sprinkled in with a regular army rather than used as a doom stack, I found it very hard to make good use of them. Obviously, they can fire above your regular lines, but that surrenders a fair bit of their mobility. You don't want to waste them charging into massed arrow fire or a hail of bullets. Yes, they can fight ferociously in a mob situation, but then you can't use them to shoot. The projectiles aren't explosive, so they won't have the impact you want on chaff infantry or loosely spread out ranged units. Once one accepts these limitations, you see that there's not much you can't do with them. You can tank for a line of handguns, 
letting them fire all around the legs and even between them. You can fire until your ammunition is exhausted, something that happens a lot sooner than with regular artillery, for better or worse, and then act as melee units that are still quite formidable. You can help gang up on high-end hero units in melee. You can aim your powerful weapons at elite cavalry to whittle down one problem for you, or the aforementioned Chaos Warrior example to shred lines of the tougher opponents rather than the weaker ones. In the end, while they bring immense value as hybrid units, they're still only single entities, and they're vampire coast walking artillery. If you want to get the absolute most out of them, you need the gunnery white treatment, including restocking ammo, spiteful shot, using them to pin down enemies for a bit more, for big area of effect spells, the worse. It may well be true that they make better doom stack units than reinforcements to an army foreign to their best tactics. It's more like they're always decent, but to make them good requires some micro that may conflict with existing mental resource requirements. But then you learn. You get better. And you find that they're contributing in all kinds of ways and all kinds of situations, even as archer magnets to pull arrows away from squishier forces. Doomstack or not, just remember they're part of a team. Mortars and spells clear out chaff, Death Guard bring up the rear, shredding elite infantry or single entities depending on the flavor. Gunnery Whites make them stronger. At some point, it does all work together. Take care, and have fun blasting infantry at point-blank range. It may not be the most efficient use of gunpowder, but it certainly makes a mess.